Hey there everyone, how are you all doing today? I am the Perpetual Noob, welcome back to another exciting, well, I'll say exciting, but I, but I don't think it really, it, it's not going to be an exciting episode today, it's a lot of, it's a lot of the minutia that you do in an RPG, you know, selling the equipment, enhancing equipment, dealing with, you know, turning in quests, that sort of thing. But hey, we're back, and we're continuing on with the story. So, always, always a good thing. In any case, welcome back. Uh, yeah, this didn't uh, end up being, this didn't end up being part of the, you know, multiple episode uh, run through that I was planning to do. Like I said in last episode, I should have known better. Then to say, yes, I have a plan, and I'm going to do multiple episodes at once, because that has yet to happen, uh, except once. It happened once with Demon Souls and my my Souls giving playthrough. So, anyways, it's it's been a it it all stemmed from the fact that it took a little bit longer to finish editing the uh, the previous episode. Uh, specifically around sound and whatnot. Uh, again, these these videos, all this footage was recorded a long while ago, before I before I learned that. Uh, yeah, that music is really music is really loud, and I uh, I need to change that. So had so went through and had to make a few adjustments to uh, to the combat music. That way, there it was easier to hear me, uh, and 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 the you know, and easier to still hear the rest of the gameplay footage. So, anyways, back to uh, back to what's going on here. Like I said, whole lot of inventory management. Going to be a lot of running around town, uh, taking care of taking care of the minutia that you need to take care of in an RPG. And now I'm thinking about it. I am gonna keep going with my uh, <laughs> with my holiday trip, my family holiday trip. You can look that tag up on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and I'm on what? Uh, let's see. I went through the Feast of the Fish. So I'm on day three. Yeah, I know. Don't worry. It probably won't. It probably won't be. Uh, you know, day three, day four, day five. But. Uh, at least day three, you know, I actually got to try a PS4 for the first time. My little brother has one. I, I say I say little. He, I have to say younger brother. He's like six two. I'm not that tall. So he's uh, yeah, he's my younger brother. But uh, he has a PS4, and so I got to try Battlefield 4 on that. I am awful. At Battlefield 4, but the controller, the PS4 controller, was really nice. Uh, I think I think it was really a mix of things. One that Battlefield 4 tries to present itself as like it might be a Call of Duty game. I, it, it feels like it's trying to say, "Oh, hi." Look at all this! Look at all this action and all this stuff that's going on. Run around, be really fast, go crazy. But then the moment you do that, the game laughs at you and you blow up and die. Bit of a, bit of a, or maybe it's just me because I've only really played Call of Duty games. Maybe it's just a misunderstanding on my part. Uh, but aside from that. Oh, and the controls. I, why, why are the the top bumpers? Why are L1 and R1 not aim down sights and fire? That killed me several times, several times during my uh, my attempts to be decent at that game. So it was fun. My my brother had a great time laughing at me and. Pointing out how bad I am, and his girlfriend enjoyed it as well, just watching me fail. But anyways, so <laughs> so there probably won't be any Battlefield 4 videos ever coming up on this channel, 
because, yeah, it was just a bad time. But, really pretty. The uh, whole PlayStation 4 interface was really nice. Kind of enjoyed that. Didn't enjoy the immense loading time that Battlefield 4 took. And even on the first time we tried to boot it up, Battlefield 4 seemed to hang. But the PlayStation didn't, so that was great. Good work. And, uh, yeah. So we did a little bit of driving then. Had headed up to, uh, we actually had, we actually had a hotel, um, kind of stored away as in, uh, in case of extreme circumstances. Uh, it was, it was kind of like our safety net for where we were going next. And, uh, so we had to check in on day three we had to check in you know make sure that make sure that we got there and the hotel would let us in and uh we we actually got to see a, a friend of ours who we hadn't seen in i'm thinking now th three years maybe it was only two years but it was a friend of ours from college that we hadn't seen uh in forever and we got to uh <laughs> We we hung out in the hotel room. We had a small uh, little smorgasbord of food. There was, you know, cheese, crackers, uh, some champagne, some mead. We had some pizza, which was delicious because it was an applewood smoked bacon and chicken pizza. Uh, it had caramelized onions on it, too, so it was really tasty. And then we played, then we played some old board games. Uh, specifically, we played some Operation, and we played, <laughs> we, for the for the fun of it, we played a game called Pretty Pretty Princess. Now, I don't know if any of any of my viewers know of that one. That one definitely seems to be the game that people stop when we were telling other people that stopped and said, "Huh, what what game is that? Never played it." But it was uh, <laughs> totally. A game that was completely designed, you know, to, to promote gender stereotypes and all that, because only girls, you know, only girls could play it, and it was all about becoming the prettiest princess by collecting the, all the jewelry and having a crown and blah 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 blah. I still won twice. That's right. I was the prettiest of the princesses. And I did it twice. We played only twice. And I did it twice. Yeah. I felt like a boss. But that's what you get to do when you get to become... <laughs> that's what you get to do when you become an adult. You just go back to your... Back to your childhood of games you never played. Because actually I never even played Operation when I was a kid. And then you play it with your friends. And you, get, and you all have a good time. So, in any case, uh, and I, I got distracted. I just saw in my video that I have the skill Act of Vengeance now, which threw me off because I was thinking, wait a minute, I had Act of Atonement in my previous video, but not catching that I had upgraded Act of Atonement to Act of Vengeance, and then that automatically slots it in. So it just threw me off of, of my my own little story, which shows you how awake I am. <laughs> so it was a good time. We actually had a really good time seeing our friend, uh, and and had a good little mini Christmas. So at this point, we've had you know something like one, two. This was like our third mini Christmas, which is how these family trips go. You end up having. You end up having a whole lot of Christmases, which sounds like fun until you know essentially until you until you until it happens and the car starts filling up and you've already packed what you needed to bring to everybody else's house and you packed for you know like a ten day road trip and now you're getting stuff from people and it's just like you know what. Come on, <laughs> this is getting nuts. I mean, by the time we got to the by the time we got to the end of the trip, it took us 
think four trips to unload the car. Yeah, four trips. That's how much stuff was in the car by the end of this trip. You know, it's fun. It's fun to get. It's fun to get Christmas gifts. In a, you know, no, it kind of isn't actually at this. At this stage, it. I don't know. I uh. I have trouble disassociating Christmas gifts from the obligation to give Christmas gifts. You know, I, 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 uh, I try, I try to, you know, I guess I look at it differently and say that, well, hey, let's, you know, we came we came out here to visit what's the you know, do, that was essentially I kind of look at it as that is you know maybe it's maybe I'm really selfish or maybe I'm just really lazy but that I look at that as the Christmas gift that we actually you know again you, you from my previous episode you learned it was a you know, over a thousand miles round trip to go on this family holiday trip, and that's that's not easy. But uh, you, you know, people, and I don't know, maybe, and I I haven't asked really, because how do you ask that? How do you ask people? Hey, do you feel like you're obligated to give us this this Christmas gift because it's Christmas and not because you actually want to give us a gift? You know, you, you don't. It's a little tricky to just come right out and say something like that, which is why I'm now doing it over <laughs> over this commentary. Uh, but you you do wonder, and it I don't know. It feels like it. Yeah, you know, I lo I love seeing my family. I love I loved being able to hang out with my with my brothers, with my sister, with with some of my parents. You know, and and some and then some of my other relatives I got to see much later on in the trip. It was a great time. You know, I. But uh, yeah, I don't know the the whole Christmas gifts thing. I I haven't been a fan in, in a very very long time. You know, call me a Scrooge or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's always it's always made me feel a little uncomfortable because. Yeah, what? Uh, not to be, I'm not trying to be uh, arrogant or something, but when it comes when it comes down to Christmas and Christmas gifts, I'd rather I'd rather go and and you know get gifts for like a family that's on uh, the hall, like the the Christmas giving tree essentially, you know, that doesn't have anything or that is asking for uh, for gifts from other people you know that sort of thing that's where I'd rather that's where I'd rather do, go so anyways I've, I've come wow bit of a tangent right there my, my apologies got a little got a little dark uh, so we next day 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 four uh, moved on to our fourth location, which was actually the in-laws, um, my wife's, uh, family's home. Yes, I don't know if I've actually mentioned explicitly that I am married until this video, but yes, I am married, and it's awesome. No, really, it, it really is. I mean, I guess, you know, I got lucky, uh, but I got to marry my best friend so uh, it's just fantastic um, oh ha, what I'm doing right now draining uh, emptying out my support ponds uh, inventories because I'm about to trade them out for new ones what will it be today? so yeah being married it's awesome I am married we've been married now almost five years and it's it's been a it's been a really fun time. Certainly not without its struggles. 
but uh, what long-term relationship isn't without those, and, and it's been well worth the effort, so no complaints here on that. But anyways, we moved on to the in-laws, um, which was, uh, we were going to be there for five days, six, five-ish, four nights. Yeah, four nights, five days, and uh, that was gonna. That was we were kind of going into it already, uh, feeling a little bit extra pressure because my brother-in-law is deploying to Afghanistan in January. So there was that fun little, uh, fun little bit of tension this Christmas and uh, unfor unfortunately that did blow up uh, <laughs> that did blow up uh, a little bit later on in the visit now I'll get to that I'll get to the I'll get to that stuff maybe actually maybe even in next episode because boy it was uh, there was there was a lot there so instead, I'm going to talk about all the good stuff that happened uh, while we were there, all the fun stuff that we did. Because we actually, <laughs> we actually introduced, we introduced the her family to Munchkin, uh, specifically the Apocalypse uh, expansion of it. Uh, we've we've played Munchkin quite a bit, but I think when we went out, uh, when we went out to purchase it, we decided. Hey, you know what? Let's grab one of the expansions so that when we go to visit friends that we know have Munchkin, we can include our expansion and make the game bigger and make it way more entertaining. Because Munchkin's a fantastic game. I we love that game a lot. Uh, I mean, it's, it's it's so much fun, and yeah, it can it can devolve uh, into a, a pretty annoying time. If you have, if you have people who are terrible at stealing, and want to be that asshole though that keeps stealing stuff, like her brother, <laughs> that was, uh, he was terrible at it, but he wanted, he just couldn't help himself. He just kept trying, and eventually, <laughs> and this was like right at the beginning when we were still trying to teach everyone how to play, and he, he would, and we we eventually. The whole table essentially just said, dude, just stop. You're killing, you're, you're making this game take way too long now because you're so bad at this. We're constantly catching you and we're constantly calling you on it. So we have to wait for you to put your stuff back. Thankfully, he did decide to stop. Um, we ended up playing a couple of games. We played, did, wait, did we? Oh no, we may have only played the one. We may have, now that I'm thinking about it, we may have actually only played the one that was, uh, it was, um, where we just played with our hands face up. So, so, uh, the parents, you know, so everybody, the parents, our brother-in-law could learn, uh, how to play. And, uh. It was it was a good time though. It took a few hands, but eventually, but eventually everybody everybody caught on and started to understand how it went. And uh, <laughs> we did. We actually finished the game with eighty percent of the table at level nine. Yeah. Yeah. For anybody who's played Munchkin, that little statistic probably just made your head explode. Yes, there was only one person who wasn't at level 9, and they were at level 8 instead. It was... It, it was crazy. I mean, seriously. How do you... Have we, we, just had, we just had enough cards, and we were drawing enough monsters. And uh, the, the, whole, the whole thing with the seals seemed to really help keep keep us at 
keep people at level nine and uh <laughs> and we were able to go around back and forth and keep keep people from gaining XP from a monster or from even fighting a monster and gaining XP I mean gaining a level you don't gain XP in munchkin uh, <laughs> come on I'm busy watching I'm busy watching a, a, you know a regular RPG where there is XP and whatnot you know my brain may be a little may, may have a little trouble remembering the proper terminology but we got to the point where, uh, where my mother-in-law was was just like, "Can somebody please just end the game? Can seriously? At uh, <laughs> can somebody please open a seventh seal? Because we were actually at six for quite a few rounds, um, and and a couple of people did have hand did have cards in hand that were simply like you know, gain a level and open a seal or do this and open a seal uh, somebody somebody did open did kick in the door and found the abomination and thought hmm do I just open the seal and end the game I don't know and actually now that I'm re remembering that's actually how our person won uh, they actually <laughs> we actually opened the seventh seal and then had to uh had to count up all of our gear, and lo and behold, uh, my father-in-law he had the most gear, and he had so he he was worth the most when uh, when the time came for the seventh seal to open. <laughs> so it was a pretty it was a pretty good game. We actually we made it last a lot longer than it should have because we were you know there were at least. There were at least uh, three or four of us on the table that wanted to win, so we didn't want anybody else to win, and we were doing everything we could, and thanks to the six seals being open, it made things a bit easier. It, uh, <laughs> so, you know, even just a, a level 10 monster all of a sudden is now a bit of a bigger problem, being level 16. So that was a fun time. Uh... I actually did bring I actually did bring my PS3. I didn't bring any of my capture equipment because we already had enough stuff coming with us. Uh, but I did bring. Oh man, look at that sword! Yeah, that's why I kind of ran around that guy because I want that sword. That sword looked amazing. Oh, and I don't know. Is this my first time being in the rift? And cat, or I should say, capturing my time in the rift? I don't know. It might be. And if so, this is where you go and pick up more pawns. More pawns created by other people, I should say. You know, you can run around the game, the game world, and the game will give you uh, various pawns. Some of them will be created by players, others are generally created by the game. But, uh, so here I am just looking for, just looking for some other pawns to uh, bring in, because now I'm level 45, and... My support pawns are level 40. I think, yeah, I think they're 40. So I kind of implemented this whole idea of every five levels I'll go back into the rift, which is where all the pawns exist, and uh, pick out two more pawns. And yes, I know I'm picking up only women. What can I say? I love being surrounded by beautiful women. It's a cool thing. And I only do it in video games, because where else can you do that? In video games. So in any case, uh, we also, so we got to we got to uh, teach the family how to play Munchkin, and they actually seemed to enjoy it, which was great. Uh, nothing nothing worse than than exposing somebody to a new game that you like a lot, and have that person go, yeah, this game sucks. I don't really want to play it ever again. Then you feel. That makes you feel pretty shitty and a bit like a dick. Um. So then we moved on uh, another day. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, I was talking about how I brought my PS3, but none of my capture equipment. Whew! I'm all over the place here. So I actually got to play. I played some Borderlands with uh, my brother-in-law mainly because he he had never played it, and you know he just wanted something to shoot. 
that we could play together. Uh, we did. Well, I shouldn't. I shouldn't say we started with Borderlands because I actually started with Blaze Blue Continuum Shift Extend. Um, I was just playing it for a little bit, messing around with the story, because I'm abysmal at the actual, like you know, the PvP side of the fighting game. So I was still playing through the story, trying to complete all of that because I love the Blaze Blue story. Holy cow, it's so convoluted and so deep. It's it's great. I love it. It's actually probably 50% of the reason why I keep buying the next game and the next game because it's I just love playing it. And you know what? And maybe maybe if I'm feeling really uh masochistic, I'll record some of my uh Blaze Blue yes, ranked play. Maybe. And I might just post it. Uh, maybe Maybe live commentary, I may just do post instead. <laughs> Though, because live will just be me complaining and bitching about how I'm terrible with a pad and I can't do any combos with it because I don't know combos and yes, my timing is terrible and all that sort of fun stuff. Who knows? Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I won't. I guess we'll, we'll kind of see. <laughs> but I do love it, and I started playing that, and so uh, my brother-in-law got kind of interested and was like, hey, so why don't we why don't we play a little bit? And I said, okay, so I taught him various controls and whatnot, and he he uh, was looking for more of a rushdown kind of character, just some character he could use to, you know, he could push buttons, and they'll run up to you, and they'll punch you rather than anybody who does any special abilities. Like, he tried Hazuma and went, what the hell is this guy? I don't even understand how this guy works. What the crap? So it wasn't a, he wasn't a big fan of, of Hazuma. Which is fine, because Hazuma's a dick anyways. That guy's so mean. <laughs> uh, in any case, we then, we then moved on to uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3, which again, if I'm feeling really masochistic, maybe there will be some footage up up on this uh, up on this channel. Maybe. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> so we tried that a little bit. Again, explained to him how how the controls work. He uh, he. So I'm. I mean I'm. I'm low tier I'd say in terms of uh, skill but of course he'd never played either of these games so he was even he was even worse and uh, <laughs> he decided that hey how about we play something where we're where we're not fighting how about we how about we actually uh, you know play together so that's when we decided to go into uh, God, that helmet. It looks so weird on her. It, it just makes her head look extra big or egg-heady. So we decided to play Borderlands 2. And uh, since we're near the end of this episode, I'll get into that a bit more uh, later on. And, uh, you know, I hope you've enjoyed my ramblings today. And uh, I'll have another episode as soon as I can. I'll see you all next time.